Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. My name is Art Tapaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Review Magazine, the largest blues magazine in the world. And tonight we're privileged to have uh, one of the, the hot young, I say hot young guitarists, Albert Castilla. But Albert has been around a long time and uh, he's, he's out on the road now touring in support of his sixth CD. Albert, welcome to Palmer, Thank Massachusetts. You, Art. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me. You know, and when I say one of the young blues guitarists, you're. Uh, you're fairly young on the scene, but you have some really deep old roots. And, and the roots that I think our readers of Blues Review, but also the viewers of this Legends program would be so interested in is your tenure with Junior Wells. Albert, for those people who don't know, was Junior's lead guitar player in Junior's last band. That's right. Yeah. And how long did you play with him? Was it? Uh, it was about nine months, yeah. nine to ten yeah. months. How did that come about? We, we um, Junior and I had a mutual friend in... Uh, in Florida, where I where I was playing, uh, and I was a social worker as well. I was, mm -hmm. I was doing a day gig uh, as a caseworker yeah. for the state of Florida welfare system. And uh, my friend Gloria Pierce, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she uh, she was good friends with Junior, and uh, he happened to be in town uh, New Year's Eve of '96. Yeah, and uh, she called me and invited me to go out to see him, and uh, she told me to bring my guitar. Yeah. Just in case. Did you know what did you know of Junior at that point? Were oh, you? I knew of, of Hoodoo Man Blues okay. and and and, and uh, his recordings with Buddy with Guy. With Buddy Guy, yeah. Um, yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. He was he he was, he, he was uh, you know, he's a legend. That's right. So uh, that's what I knew. Yeah. And so we went to go see him, and uh, he was just really nice, really a real mm -hmm. nice guy. Uh, probably because I wasn't in his band at the time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, so, but he, he was really nice and and. Uh, so we, I met him before the show, and we hung out. And his road manager, Michael Blakemore, came up to mm -hmm. me while Junior was playing during his first set, and he said, uh, "He said uh, I heard you could play guitar." And I said, "Yeah, I can play a little bit." And he said, "Well, uh, you want to play with him?" I said, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. And and he goes, "Okay, well, you, you better be good, because uh, if if you can't uh, if you can't hack it up there, you know, uh, he's gonna he's gonna be really tough on you." Yeah. And I said, "Look, man, you know, I work at the welfare office. So yeah, like yeah. a bad day at the office, you know, a, bad, right. day, a bad day with Junior Wells beats a good day at the office. So, That's right. So yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I knew what I was in for, and right. I was ready for it. So were, I you, got, were you nervous? I mean, what? The, yeah, I was. Like I was a caught. little. I was a little nervous, but yeah. I wasn't gonna uh, pass up an opportunity Absolutely. to play with Junior Wells. Absolutely. And uh, so I got up there with the band. That we opened the set up without him. Second set. The, yeah, the yeah. second set. Mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, usually the, the band opens up right. the, the set and then Junior would come up. So I, w I got up and did two or three songs with the band mm -hmm. without Junior. And then Junior came up and I think we did Messing with the Kid oh, yeah. and Little Red Rooster, a couple more songs. I think I did four more songs with him. Wow. And uh, I got off the stage and I ran two blocks up the street to a payphone to call my parents. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I call, so I called my mom. I said hey, I got to play with Junior Wells, and my mom was like, "Who?" Yeah, yeah. My dad was like, "Who?" Because they they weren't familiar with blues. Right, right. But they were excited for me. Yeah. And I went back and I hung out hung out with Junior in the band a little bit. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, drank out of his flask. He had Tangare. Yeah, yeah. And hung out with him, and uh, and they had to they had to leave. They went off to to Alabama, I think. They had to, so they couldn't stay too long. Uh -huh. and, uh, didn't hear from him for about a you know I didn't hear. Anything from him? I didn't think anything of it after yeah. that. You know, did, so it was what, just a great what, moment. Right. And what did he say to you? Did he? Did, I mean, did he give you that? We nice just, work, kid. Well, or? you know, we, we, he was. The thing about Junior, he was he was very accessible. Yeah. So we, it was a lot of small talk, but mm -hmm. then people there were lines of people who wanted to talk to him as well. Right. So you know, between conversations, people would like. Yeah. Want to talk to him and stuff. So it was a lot of small talk. It wasn't anything yeah. deep. You know, like yeah. musical. Yeah. Or, did you get the sense that night that you passed the test? I felt that I passed the test, but I didn't have a job or anything. Yeah, right, right. So I wasn't thinking in terms of, well, you know, I'm sure he's going to call me. No. It was just one of those moments that I I, I could have died that night at yeah. that time, you know. And, uh, I, you know, I, I felt good about myself mm -hmm. a little bit. You know, I, I, I've been really, I wasn't feeling too good about myself at that time because the, the job was a real drag. Yeah. But I was playing nights. You know, I always played no matter what. No matter what I did for a living, I was always playing mm -hmm. nights. And, you know, it was kind of taking its toll on, on me at the time. You know, the, the welfare business is a real challenging 
eats at your soul. It does. Yeah. It does because well, I went in as an uh, an idealist, you know, yeah. thinking I could help people, and I didn't feel like I was. Yeah. And on top of that, it wasn't really something I really wanted to do. I wanted to play music for a living. Right. So when this happened, you know, I felt like I just felt a little better about myself. I I knew that I could hang in with guys like that. Yeah, that's cool. Time, a little bit. So um, he, you know, he went off and uh, didn't think anything of mm -hmm. it afterwards, you know, except that it was a great moment in my life that I'll never forget. Little did I know that there was going to be more adventures to come because like yeah. a couple months later, his regular guitar player uh, couldn't do a few dates. Mm -hmm. So his road manager called me wow. and said, can you come up and uh, do three dates with us? Uh, sure. Uh, Buffalo, Cleveland and Detroit. Mm -hmm. A little stretch and then it yeah. flew me back home. Yeah. So I did that and that was amazing. Yeah. You know, I was like, this is really cool, you know. I think I could do this for a living, you know, and, I, and then I got cocky when I got home and, and um, so I, I took a leave of absence for, for, for about a month, uh -huh. thinking that I was going to try to make, make it just solely as a musician. And that wasn't working out. You know, it was really tough getting work at the time in Miami. Yeah. yeah. So uh, about a month after that gig with Junior, I had, I was, had my face down in the couch at my parents' house. and. Uh, I get a call in the afternoon. I was just face down. I swear, I was face down, depressed because I wasn't making it work. And I was going to have to go back to work, you know, yeah. to my real yeah. job. Yeah. I'm face down on my couch, and I get a call from from Junior's road manager, and he goes, uh, "Hey man, can you uh, can you be up in Chicago in three days?" And I said, "For what?" I said, "No, to play with Junior. Can you come up and be in Chicago in three days?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Let me think about it." Okay, I'll be right over. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I dropped everything. I dropped the gig. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of gigs with some bands I was playing with. I did those, and then I, I was on a plane out to O'Hare. That Monday. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know anything about Chicago other than it was a, a blues mecca. Yeah. But I didn't. I wasn't familiar with the weather at the time. I got on a plane and I showed up in late. Well, um, was it late March? I think it was late March, late March, no, it was late April. Yeah. I showed up in Chicago in late April in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah. When I got off the plane, it was 45 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, Welcome to Chicago. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, everything yeah. changed like that. You know, yeah. I had to move up there and I, I had to, you know, I had to find a place to live. Yeah. And I, and I just threw caution to the wind. I'll worry about that when I get there. Yeah, it all changed like in three days. Yeah, wow. everything changed like that. I had to make make a decision. I I, I didn't even hesitate. Yeah, no, and uh, yeah, I I, uh, I went and uh, I had a cousin who lived who li who lived in uh, on Belmont and mm -hmm. Lincoln, on the north side, and he had a, a loft, and I asked if I could stay at his house for a couple of weeks, till I could find a place. Yeah, and. Uh, the lofts, you know, the, the thing about lofts is there's no, uh, you know, the, the, the walls don't go all the way up. Right. And I had a bad, bad snoring problem. Mm -hmm. And so I lasted a day there. <laughs> <laughs> Stayed with another cousin, flopped it at, at my cousin's, uh, now it's, it's, it's his wife now. So I, I, and yeah. then I stayed at a transient hotel for a few days. Yeah. One of those hotels, uh, uh, just like out of the Blues Brothers. Yeah. I stayed there for about a week and a half. Yeah, just like, just like the Blues Brothers movie. Yeah, ratty old, right, right next to the L. I'm like, wow, and I was like, I was looking out the window. I was like, this is great, <laughs> this is great. Yeah, this is this is awesome. My, yeah. This is what I wanted to do. Yeah, you know, and uh, and the gigs you're doing at this point with Junior are every night of the week or tiny, small gigs. He was roses. Getting, it was it ranged. Well, that was one of the gigs. Yeah, but it ranged. It was an incredible range of gigs. It mm -hmm. went from roses to to uh to you know major festivals i mean there was a yeah i went we went there was one the, well i guess i meant when i said that when you first arrived what was the level of the gig for these first couple of weeks they were club dates yeah we yeah. the I, I believe the first date i did with him was at blues etc mm -hmm. on belmont yeah and uh and then we did uh roses yeah Roses was something. Yeah. That first and, gig at Roses with Junior was something. And, and I had the flu. I got the flu, I guess, from, from showing up in Chicago yeah, right. with no clothes. Yeah. So I get the flu, and, and I played, did the Roses gig, and I was dying to get off the stage. And Dave Myers showed up. 
I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Dave Meyer showed up and, and Bob Stroger. And uh, so the MC goes, oh, we're getting ready to go. I said, oh, I'm going to go home and get some sleep. Yeah. Oh, Dave Myers and Bob Stroger in the audience. We're going to have a jam. And I had to stay up there another yeah, right. hour <laughs> and died. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it was club date. Yeah, the yeah. first few dates were club dates, and then we started hitting some, yeah. some major what, festivals. What were those first few club dates like for a white guitarist out of Miami standing next to Junior Wells in, you know, predominantly black clubs? It was in education. Yeah. I re uh, Junior was really... Um, he was really tough in the beginning. Yeah. Because I had no, you know, he, they sent me a tape. Um, when I first, when I did those temporary gigs, when mm -hmm. I did those, those fill-in gigs, they had sent me to tape, uh, a tape of the, the material. Yeah. And that's how I learned the stuff. I didn't have any rehearsals. Or right, anything. right. So I had, you know, I had to, it was a trial by fire. Yeah. And, you know, those first few dates in those tough clubs, or Junior would, you know, it was unnerving playing those tough clubs. Yeah. Those guys are, those Chicago crowds are really tough. Yeah. They yeah. can be tough. Yeah. You know? They're not easily impressed. No, no. And, and, and so I was, we're, you know, nervous about that. And then, you know, Junior would turn around and he didn't like something. You know, he'd turn around and give you the, give you the stank guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he, I remember when we, when we did that Blues Etc. gig, he, he, I remember him turning around and, uh, and he was, his lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. <laughs> but you could read every word he said. It wasn't pretty. It <laughs> wasn't pretty. Was like, <laughs> so and so, you know. I'm like, oh, do it. I'm not doing yeah. it. And, and then and I thought I was going to lose the gig right after that. Yeah. So I went to the bar to get a drink, and, and Junior walked up to me. Oh, you, you'll get the hang of it. You'll be all right. You'll yeah. be all right. Yeah. I had a few of those. Sure. Uh, yeah. But I, you know, I, I came around. Yeah. You know, I, I, I got to know him and know what he want. I got to understand what he wanted from me. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. And, and again, for, from there. For, for the blues world out there, we, we, we hear so much about so many other people, but being in that inner circle with Junior Wells, what, for those nine months, what, what did you walk away with? What, 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 the, what are the lessons that a Junior Wells can teach? The biggest lesson I learned was to connect, how to connect with an audience. Uh -huh. when, when I, before I had played with Junior, I thought it was just enough to just play, you know, keep your head down and just yeah. play. And when I, every night he he bared his soul to his to his audience. Wow! You know, and he opened himself up to his audiences, and his audiences felt like they were a part of the show. And that's when I realized that that uh, there's more to this game than just playing. Yeah. yeah. You have to entertain. You have to you know. You have to the the the, the audience has to be engaged. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was the biggest lesson I learned from, among other things. Right. You right. Know, uh, his stage presence was was amazing. That's right. I learned yeah. a lot in terms of, of stage presence and and how to how to front the band and yeah. the cues and mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. conveying what 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 uh, you know him conveying what he wanted as as a as a, a front man. Front man, yeah. You know, yeah, that's what I learned. Yeah, are are there times during a show when you sort of feel Junior up there with you? Yeah, you know. That, that that I felt that, that you feel his spirit up there. And oh, all the time. Yeah. Now you, you know, know. Yeah. Now all, all yeah, the yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. All the time. I I, I don't think I, I, I uh, very few few shows I do I go on without doing a, a song for him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, guys in the band they they see that there are there are certain things that I do that that Junior used to do. Right. Certain mannerisms or right or cues. Right. That, cues. Yeah. That. Yeah, he he's always with me. He's that's always with me. If it wasn't for him, this wouldn't be. I wouldn't be talking that's to right. you right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think my, my life would have had a, a much different turn if if it wasn't for him. So yeah, I always think about him, and he's always he's always with me. Yeah. So what yeah. happened after he passed? Then y you were with him for nine months, and it seems like it took a while for you to get a recording out there for yourself. Or well, there were there you know, were other things other things happened prior to the recording. Uh -huh. well, um, well, he got he got sick. I was yeah. uh, when he when he got sick and he couldn't perform. I still stayed up in Chicago and and tried to make a go out at trying to find gigs. Yeah, playing with somebody and it was really tough. You know, I did a few gigs with Charlie Love, uh, some local guys, um, uh, J W Williams. Mm -hmm. I bummed around playing with uh, Lindsey Alexander. Oh yeah, I did yeah. did a few gigs with Lindsey and and uh, but it was really tough. And then uh, Sandra Hall came along. Oh, yeah. Shortly after Junior died, Sandra mm -hmm. was looking for a band, and she recruited uh, a few of us from from Junior's band, and and uh, 
I toured with her for about three and a half years. All right. Were you at the Poconos that year she played? I just missed doing you, the Poconos. Okay. And I heard about that. You missed me. I did. <laughs> But I, but I heard about that show, and I think I think Blues Review reviewed that show. They might have, and they yeah. mentioned. I think she was mentioned in that show. Yeah, yeah. There a lot of people were talking. Yeah. Well, I think I joined her short, shortly after that. Because then I saw her in Fort Lauderdale at that fest. Yes, I did were that. You in that gig? I okay, was cool. I was. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I was with her longer than I was with Junior. Yeah, I, and I learned a lot from her as oh, well. Oh, sure. She was terrific, and uh, so I, I did the stint with her, and and then uh, and. 2001 is when I decided to, to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to go on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Which was uh, the worst time, the worst day in the world. To, that I was, I decided I was going to, the day I decided to, to, to move on, I, to let her know, to give her my notice was September 11th. Oh my gosh. It was, it was, I, I was upset to, you know, we were, we were in Maine at uh -huh. the, uh, we played the Time Out Time Pub. Time Out Pub, yeah. And I made up my mind that night, the night before, uh, that, that's that right, because Paul do does shows on Monday, right? And nine eleven was, was on, on a Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, and uh, so I, you know, President Bush was addressing the nation, and I was sitting there with her, and I and I, and I said, "This is terrible," you know. You know by the way, I I, I got to leave the band, and she was like, uh, "Well, this is a terrible time to say that." You tell yeah, me. I said, "Well, I, you know, I didn't plan this to happen. <laughs> yeah. I just I had to do it. You know, I got to do it." Yeah. So I had a, I worked a couple more months with her, and then. Mm -hmm. uh, Struck out on my own. Yeah, yeah.